Welcome back. Today I'm going to play a rated rapid game on chess.com. What I would like to happen is for me to beat the odds. According to my archive, I have won quite a few of my last several games. These are my most recent rapid games. You can see I've won the last five in a row. Before that I lost one, then I won four in a row. Before that I lost and drew one and won several in a row before there's another draw on the list. So odds are I'm not going to win this, but I am going to try my best. I, I definitely don't want uh, a certain former world champion to accuse me of cheating, but, but he probably won't. All right, let's uh, switch over to this page here. If you're new to my channel, I'm not a titled player or a chess coach. I'm just a random person trying to get better at chess. And one of the ways that I gauge how much better I'm getting is by my rapid score here on chess.com. I don't think there's anything left to say other than to click the play button. Let's do that and let's go. I don't know what I'm going to get. I got the black pieces. I don't know what opening I will face. Let's see what my opponent plays. They played e4. I will play the Karakon defense. And we are going to get either the exchange or the advanced variation. No, we're going to get the fantasy variation. Oh my. Ah, uh, I don't see that very often, but I think what I'm supposed to play here is e6 because obviously I can't put my bishop out where I normally do. So let's play e6 and see what my opponent does. This is one of those Karo cons where the, the light squared bishop does not get out. Okay, that knight is pointed at these two squares. Is this where, I, should I go ahead and take and then get this knight out? I don't want to get the knight out now because because then that pawn will take here. Um, uh, yeah, honestly, I don't remember what to do. I do know that neither their knight nor bishop is coming in here because my c-pawn is there. So let's, you know what, let's take that e-pawn. We'll trade a couple of pawns. Um, okay, I think I know what that's doing because now I can't check, get blocked by the pawn and then come across here, right? Because the knight's protecting that. Let's see. Can we pin their knight? That gets my dark squared bishop out. Let's try that. Then maybe I can do the check. And win this. No, now I can't because they're protecting that square. Okay. And uh, this person is playing very quickly, so I'm not sure what to do here, but maybe I can trade off those pawns here. Although me moving my c-pawn again does allow that to come through. Oh, they, they've pushed forward there. You know what? Let's take this and then maybe we can do some trades right here. See if they want to trade queens this quick. They, they do not. Okay. Well, I can check and see what happens. Or I could go ahead and get this knight out. And now we have two pieces pointed there. And I'm ready to castle. Okay, they decided to protect it. I think I'm ready to castle. Either my opponent plays this variation a lot. Or, or that maybe they really know what they're doing. I don't know. I'm going to maybe try to work this knight around this way or this way. Let's go over here for now. And then maybe now we can get the light squared bishop out. But that, that pawn's not protected. I mean, it's a fairly natural move to play this, isn't it? But then, but then they push forward, don't they? What, what if I come forward here to d6? That blocks their pawn and protects mine. Can they immediately attack my queen that way? I don't think they can. Let's try it. Yeah, this one didn't take long at all to get into unfamiliar territory. Okay, that's a fairly, I think, fairly obvious attempt to come after my queen. Couldn't I just go there and prevent it? And then I'm threatening their bishop and a check. Oh, but then I'm undefending that pawn. All right. Okay, um, well, how else can we defend that pawn? Can I come in here, threatening to go there? That defends the pawn, and they can't attack it there immediately, can they? Then when they attack my queen, I can just get out of the way? Okay, maybe? I, I don't know. Oh no, I can't get out of the way there. But if they do attack my queen here, I could, I guess, go to e5. They're coming after the knight. Interesting. Wait, the, but the knight's not pinned. What are, they, what are they doing? I don't understand. Are they hoping I'll leave it there so that I can't take back because of the rook? And that I'll take back with the pawn instead? Why don't, why don't I just move the knight? Like, here, and attack the bishop. I might be missing something, but I'm going to go there, and then the two knights will protect each other once I get this knight in here. Or, or maybe they were maneuvering for this. But then I would just move the queen like I had already said I would, I think. Oh, they, they put the rook there. Hopefully I'm not missing anything, but I do feel like my time is just draining away really quickly. I'm going to have the two knights protect each other and see what my opponent does. They, they've put the queen in between them. I mean, I guess it was a, a really slight threat on the queen, but not really. And then can I come up in here and threaten their bishop? Or I guess it would go back like that, maybe. I don't know. Um, I, I want to get my light squared bishop out, but I can't put it there or there. So let's maybe see if we can get the light squared bishop out this way. I am trying to use my time a little better than I normally do in rapid games. Okay, that's uh, that's threatening my my knight, obviously. But um, can I can I just take their bishop? I didn't take much time on that one, 
but because I'm I'm running out of time. I mean, I'm, I've used already more than half my time, but I am trying to be aware that I have 600 seconds. Okay, um, let's see. We're even. Okay, so that wasn't a free bishop. That I didn't expect that it would be. I, I guess you know what? Let's just do this. I don't think they're threatening a, a mate immediately. That well, um, I'm, st I'm and I'm still not sure what to do about that. That pawn and I'm stuck to I'm stuck blocking this pawn. I've got to get my light squared bishop off the back rank so I can connect my rooks. I do expect this at some point, but um I, I don't know. Wow. Okay. They waited a while, but they did it. Um I I guess I'll just go here. What I was trying to say about the 600 seconds is that should allow me to have 10 seconds per move in a 60 move game. They are protecting this pawn. They they're not threatening anything here because of where my queen is. Let's see, that can't go anywhere. I think I'm good right there. I would like them to move that rook off the back rank, of course. I think I just want to go here and make sure that pawn doesn't go too far forward. And if they ever move their queen significantly, I'll get this pawn. But now I'm under four minutes. I think uh, possibly I... Ooh, that's... Uh, I'm going to take this rook with check. Uh, I think I took too long in the opening, responding to their opening. And then I think I can just come back down here, can't I? Like so... Back to where I was. It looks like they're aiming for this pawn. I don't know what to do about that. Oh, they did take that pawn. Okay. Then, you know what? Let's take that pawn. If they take back, I'll get their knight. They didn't take back. Okay. They're trying to get a passed pawn really quickly. Then I'll just take this pawn. And I definitely have to start moving faster now. It feels like my time is just shooting away. And um, maybe pin that knight there. I'm a little bit ahead on material, but I also don't know if I'm about to be destroyed by their their pieces that are all get, gathering around my king. Okay, they resigned. Wow, um, I was trying to think of my moves and talk at the same time, and that's probably a mistake, but I definitely felt out of sorts in this game, and I think it was because of I'm not accustomed to the fantasy variation. In Rapid, I've maybe faced it three or four times. I, I faced it a little bit more in Blitz and Bullet, but in those, I don't focus as much on perfect moves. I just focus more on speed. So yeah, in this one I felt off at the beginning, and it feel uh, and it felt like I took a lot of time. So I started getting nervous about my time near the end. But it looks like I did okay. Uh, I'm gonna run the game review and see if there was there were things that I could have done better. There almost certainly were. All right, according to this, I had six inaccuracies, one mistake, and three misses, but no blunders. My opponent had three mistakes, three blunders, three inaccuracies, and a great move. It looks like two of my misses were right there in the middle of my graph, following opponent blunders that I did not capitalize on. And the other miss is mysteriously not shown on the graph, which we've run into several times before. Are they going to be in the move list? Uh, there's a miss, there's a miss, and no. Only two misses are shown in the move list. <laughs> That's just embarrassing, chess.com. But yeah, they're, they're near the end. Because of I didn't take advantage of my opponent's two blunders, my opponent was able to get a little bit of an advantage here near the end before they gave it away completely. But it does look like I did okay against a fantasy variation. It, there were possibly a couple of inaccuracies here. I'm going to take a look and see uh, how I'm supposed to handle that opening. Oh, they've changed this. This has changed since the last time that I did an analysis. Uh, these are now in columns just like they are over here in this normal move list. Used to, when you switch to analysis, these, these moves were all listed in a row, like a sentence, but now they're in columns. Is the other miss going to be shown here? Yes, all three misses are shown here. It might take a little getting used to because I was used to reading the, the horizontally listed move list here, but I think this is better. Okay, no, apparently I did not respond appropriately to the fantasy variation. If I had an inaccuracy as early as move four, and then another one on move seven, and then three more in a row. Okay, so I need to learn from this because I do occasionally face the fantasy variation, which is the next move here being F3 changes us from the normal Karakon defense to the fantasy variation. The fantasy is F3 here which is not even one of top uh, top five moves, but that's what they played. And oh, there for a second, it's at the take immediately. I, I'm pretty sure that's not right. Okay, E6 is correct here. Or E5 even. Nope, E5 dropped all of a sudden. E6 or H6. Nope, it, wow, it changed again. I thought it was done. Queen to B6 now. Or E6. Or E5. Or A6. Or H6. Interesting. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure somebody told me to play E6 here. They played Knight to C3, which is one of the top moves. Okay. Now, what I played was taking here, which I should not have done. Wait, it, it says I should have played 
All right, I waited a little bit so the lines would quit changing, but it looks like a bunch of moves keep us near even at this point. I could go ahead and pin the knight immediately. I could get this knight out to f6 because they're not going to... It says they would play e5, okay, and then I would have to immediately move that knight again. That doesn't seem like a good plan. Queen to b6 or knight to d7 are my top four moves. Or b5. Yeah, b5 is, is right up there. I will try to remember in the future. I, I, I All I remembered in... The past from the past was to play e6 and then once that happened i didn't know what to do i don't face this one enough okay so i'll try to remember b4 i'm probably not going to play uh knight to f6 here until i get a lot more experienced because i i mean they're going to play that then i have to move the knight again me playing knight to f6 invites them to force me to break opening principles which is moving one piece twice in the opening here so far i'm following opening principles i'm trying to lay claim to center squares um occupying and, and patrolling center and center adjacent squares and very quickly hope to get pieces out to good squares where I don't have to move them again immediately. And this, I have to move that again immediately. Uh, this one, I would have to, I mean, I guess it's the same thing. It says if I played that, they would develop another piece and then I could get this knight out and be ready to castle. But if I did play this, they could play the A pawn, in which case I would take, right? Is the A, is A3 one of their top moves? It, it, it is not. Yep. Oh, it, it showed up there for a second. Where'd it go? Okay, so yeah, if they played that, then I would take, right? It looks like I would, and then they would, I assume, take back. Oh, and then I would take this pawn because that knight's gone. Okay, I'll try to remember that one then. Let's get out of this. Oh, I don't like the way that variation shows up there. Okay, so in this position, I'll try to remember, develop a piece. If they push, I can take, they'll have to take back, and then take this center pawn here, and once they take back, I can get my other knight out and castle. And here I have a bunch of inaccuracies, misses, and mistakes in a row. Wow. It looks like of my next 11 moves, 8 of them were bad. That's, that's not encouraging. Okay, it says knight to e4 was my best move here, or a6. I guess a6 would be preparing an eventual b5. It does look like that. I'm not sure what knight to e4 is doing other than, oh, I would play f5 after that to uh, make an outpost square, I guess. But I think they would... Wouldn't they immediately just... No, they couldn't... Yeah, they could just put their knight over here and immediately threaten my knight. But then I guess I would take it and they would put their bishop here. I, I don't know. I probably wouldn't play that without a pawn already in place. But, well, again, I was thinking about these two pawns. That's why I played this. That's inaccurate. My opponent is now getting close to plus one. But they did not play their best move here. They were supposed to... What does that do? They were supposed to play bishop to d3. I don't know what that does. Or bishop to g5. Because my queen is still back here. Okay. But even in that line, it says they're, they eventually want to play bishop to d3. Okay. I don't know. They played this, which I thought was a good move at the time. It's attacking an undefended pawn. Not only is, is my c-pawn undefended, but I, it's hard for me to defend it. Now it says what I should do is play rook to e8, which would encourage the bishop to attack the pawn that it had been wanting to attack the whole time. That's the reason it came out, right? So that's why I don't understand. I mean, I know rook to e8 is putting a rook on an open file. In this case, the only completely open file on the board. So I understand why that alone would be a good move. But I, but here I thought, I thought that was important, but apparently not. It says it's okay. They're going to take that and then we'll just keep going. But I thought I had to defend that pawn. I played my third best move. I'm not sure why it was counted as inaccurate. We're still between plus one and minus one. But again, it says I need to play rook to e8. And now, of course, they won't take this. They would just move it over. Okay. I was still trying to go for this pawn, so I played that. That's bad, but we're still between plus one and minus one. And my opponent made the mistake. Okay, see, I, I wondered about that. Was it right for me to play knight to e4 here? It was. Okay, it was one of my two best moves, and it looked like they're about even. Of course, I can just move it out of the way. It says that's good, but you saw it was one of my two best moves, and those two best moves were rated equally by Stockfish. Okay, they're not supposed to lose this bishop for the knight. They're supposed to back it up, but instead they undefended the bishop, and I should have... Oh, I should have just taken it right then. Why didn't I take it right then? Okay, that was my miss. I should have just immediately taken the bishop. It wasn't defended. But for some reason, I had this weird idea of putting, of having my knights protect each other. It was my second best move, but it's nowhere near the minus 2.7 that my opponent gave me by hanging the bishop. Okay, I completely understand that. My opponent blundered again, and I think that is a blunder because it hangs... No, it... Oh, I should have checked. I should have checked. I get it, because no matter how they took back, that would have been an even exchange, and then I would have again got the bishop for free. I get that. But instead, I thought to myself, these two are protected. I should go ahead and protect this C pawn so I don't have to stay there with my queen anymore. And it didn't make sense to take the bishop now because th there would be even 
exchanges all around, which is what happened eventually. Okay, yeah, that was the miss because I didn't take their light squared. I could have gotten both their bishops for one knight. G6 is my best move now. All right, that surprises me. Or this. But I was supposed to, uh, but I did get my bishop off the back rank. I just went over here with it. Why was that bad? I thought that was good. If I went here, then what was it going to do? Just here in a minute, the rook was going to come down and take it, at, you know, after I moved my queen someplace. That's why I didn't put, want to put it there, because I didn't want to leave my queen here. Also, my queen's blockading that pawn, and I didn't want to use it to blockade the pawn, which is why I went after the rear one. But that's a mistake. My opponent now is over plus one. I think, I think that's the first time they've been over plus one or at plus one, and it's because of knight to f5. Okay, well, I thought they were about to challenge my queen. It is my absolute best move to slide right in there. And now they're supposed to check me, protected by the rook. And I would move over, and then they would trade queens with me damaging my pawn structure. And then after all those exchanges, they would bring this rook up to protect that backward C pawn there. I think I understand, but that was my best move here. But I should have... Is, oh, that's why I should have played G6 on the previous turn? Backing up? Here. Because then that would prevent them from playing this. But it would still damage my pawn structure, but they would lose a whole knight for it. The other way, the other way they would damage my pawn structure without losing the knight. That makes sense. But because I didn't play that, and when they did, queen to f6 was my best move. They just didn't take their best move after that. They went there. And my best move is to undevelop the bishop. Oh my goodness. My best move is to undevelop the bishop. Ah, come on. And it's a miss that I didn't do that. Okay, well, I had hoped to not have to analyze every single move of this game, but apparently on most of them we, we messed up. I have a lot of learning to do. I, I played this because I, they have a passed pawn. And I've just learned in a couple of recent analyses of my own where I had a passed pawn, I kept making the mistake of not pushing it, of not protecting it on its way down, of not trying to clear its path. So that's what I was kind of focused on here. This, this pawn already made it past, and I've got to stay in front of it. They're protecting that next square. Pretty soon they're going to be able to protect the following square. And, and I can't get rid of its defender yet because of the queen. But again, they're supposed to check me, which would force me to move over. And then they're just going to leave that knight there while they bring their rook here to get behind that passed pawn. But they did not. They came down here with the rook. That I wonder, was that a misclick? Was this a case of where they thought they had selected the knight and then tapped that square, but instead they had selected the rook and tapped and it went down there? Or do you think that's what they intended to do? I think it's what they intended to do. It, it seemed like they were fairly obviously targeting my A pawn. But the problem, of course, is, is that they gave up their other rook which I had mentioned, didn't I mention just like two turns before that, that I, oh, I hope they do something with this rook. Okay, so that was my best move. That was their only move. I mean, besides blocking and losing a queen or a rook, my best move was to come back. That's what I thought, because uh, if I didn't, like if, you know, if I just took this pawn or something, they had a mate. So yeah, I, I needed to stay where I could protect this pawn. They are supposed to back up now to protect that pawn, but instead they did what I thought they were going to do. They came down here to take the a7 pawn. That's what I thought. But that allows me here, because I realized if I take this pawn, if they take my bishop, then I would get their knight. Okay, and their best move should have been to bring their king up? That's what it says. I, I don't understand that, but, but they, they played a4, which I guess they thought they had cleared a path for it. And it said it would have been slightly better to take this past pawn with my rook, but I took with my bishop because that was, that's been my concern for a long time. So I had to do it. Uh, what they needed, to, their, their best move here is... Their best move here is to trade queens with me to pick up... Would they take back? They would. It says that, yeah, their best move is to give up both of those pieces for my queen and that pawn. That's their absolute best move. I think maybe they just didn't know what to do here, which is why they played what they did. And the reason that I played this was not only to continue uh, protecting here, but A, to get out of the way of my rook, and B, to point at this. I, I was thinking we could just, you know, take, take care of that problem now. I think I, I might have drawn an arrow here right before my opponent resigned. Well, that game was confusing in places, not only during the game, but during the analysis. I'm glad I won, and now I'm rated 1291. Good grief, I'm getting close to 1300 again. For those of you that have stuck with me through this career... Whoa, there, there's a bug. For those of you who have stuck with me through this long and tumultuous journey where I started in the 1300s recording these games and I dropped way down and now I've had to work my way back up, I do appreciate you spending your time here. I appreciate your comments. Those of you that have tried to help or encourage, let's all get better at chess together. I'll see you in the next one.